Welcome to the Nalan Tobago Tour News for Report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Nicola Barto. Let's take a look at the headlines. The Water and Sewage Authority announces the resumption of regular water supply to communities in North and East Trinidad. Cabinet agrees to allocate $190 million for Carnival 2014, two offset costs from as far back as 2010. And the Minister of National Security aims to utilize more expertise among the National Protective Services to battle crime. Thank you for joining us. Residents of North and East Trinidad can now rest easy as the Water and Sewage Authority has completed repair works to a ruptured 48-inch main that restricted the water supply to homes, schools and hospitals earlier this week. The Water and Sewage Authority has completed emergency repairs to the ruptured 48-inch steel carry North Trunk Main located along the westbound lane of the Churchill Roosevelt Highway in the vicinity of Trinity Mall. A release from WASA advised that at 8.45 p.m. on Thursday, the emergency repairs were completed. The process of reactivating the Carney North transmission system began at 9 p.m. The authority said with the gradual reintroduction of water into the system, scoring is likely to occur and this will result in discoloration of supply. In instances where this occurs, customers are advised to partially open their taps and allow the water to run until there is a visible improvement in water quality. Wasser said this collected water can be put to general use but should not be consumed until a return to normal water quality. The water can also be allowed to stand or settle before use. There are some customers based on their location along the distribution system in relation to the Carney Water Treatment Plant who will experience an immediate normalization in service, while others will see full restoration in accordance with established supply schedules by 6 p.m. on Friday. The Carney North Trunk Main was reported ruptured at 2.30 p.m. on Wednesday during pilling work being carried out by contractor Jasamko, who has been hired by the Ministry of Works and Infrastructure to reconstruct and widen the Aruka River Bridge as part of the overall Churchill Roosevelt Highway expansion project. The authority regrets the inconvenience caused to customers during the period of interruption in service, which became necessary in order to effect the emergency repairs. For further information, Customers are encouraged to contact WASA's customer call center toll free at 800 4420 or 800 4426. Nikolai Edwards, News 4. $190 million, that's the amount allocated to Carnival 2014. Now, this was announced by Dr. The Honorable Lincoln Douglas, Minister of Arts and Multiculturalism, at the Post Cabinet News Conference on Thursday. Now, of the $190 million, $115 million will be used to offset outstanding debts from previous carnivals. Carnival this year will take us close to uh, $190 million. Dr. The Honorable Lincoln Douglas, Minister of Arts and Multiculturalism, in announcing the $190 million allocated to this year's Carnival celebration, was quick to state that $115 million of that allocation would be going to outstanding payments since 2010. Minister Douglas explained that delayed payments were due to a wide range of issues including contractual types of mismanagement, evaluation of delivery of the product, and the unavailability of money. He said this year's allocation will be given to the National Carnival Commission, NCC, which will then allocate to various stakeholders. The Cabinet has also agreed to the provision of support to Carnival 2014 by the payment of prize monies in respect to the undermentioned competitions uh, in a total sum of $11.95 million. The Chutney Soka Mona competition It'll be $4.5 million, and the International Soka Mona Competition, $7.45 million. This uh, sum of $11.95 million will be met from the budgetary allocations of, uh, of various ministries. In addition to the known shows and competitions, Minister Douglas said an art exhibition will be put on featuring local artists. He described this as carnival through the eyes of the artist. In addition to those particular events which would continue as, as normal, that is Mass, Calypso and Steel Band, we want to let you know that there would also be a carnival art exhibition that would um, be exhibiting 
uh, works curated by the Art Society of Trinidad and Tobago. The works of many of the nation's preeminent artists will be featured in a tribute to Carnival, allowing visitors to see iconic festivals through the eyes of the artists. Asked about the lyrics of songs this year and whether there was any policy with respect to state funding, Minister Douglas said the state played a role in the development of the art form. He, however, noted that producers and artists should aim to deliver quality of music that was world standard. Felicia wilson more News 4. In other news, the Ministry of Legal Affairs is inviting the public to participate in its second round of consultations on constitution reform. Now, this begins on Monday, February 10th at 5 p.m. The second round of talks will be focused around the feedback on the draft report, which was compiled after a comprehensive first round of national consultations, which saw the appointed commissioners traverse the length and breadth of the Twin Isle, actively accepting and encouraging contributions from every corner of society. The recall consultations will be held on Monday, February 10th. 10th, 2014 at UE Sport and Physical Education Center, that's the UE SPEC, at the University of the West Indies, St. Augustine. Wednesday, 12 February 2014 at Chiguanas Regional Corporation Complex, Kamabach and Tate Streets at the corner of Chiguanas. And Monday, 17 February 2014 at Signal Hill Secondary School, that's Signal Hill in Tobago. And Wednesday, 19 February 2014 in South at a venue to be confirmed. All consultations will begin at 5 p.m. More news after the break. Stay with us. The Trinidad and Tobago Defense Force, Police and Judiciary should all have a say in how the nation's crime problem should be solved. National Security Minister Senator the Honorable Gary Griffith says for far too long the expert opinions of the real national security experts have been neglected while politicians attempt to fix something they know little about. The Ministry of National Security recently hosted a National Security Policy and Strategy Drafting Workshop. Addressing those gathered, Minister Griffith says the workshop is critical to the process of establishing an efficient national security policy and strategy framework. He explains it will allow members of the Protective Services, Defense Force and Judiciary to also contribute to the fight against crime at a strategic level rather than simply following the government's orders. The concern that I have seen for far too long has been the, the unfortunate situation where governments or politicians are the ones who have continued to direct national security policies. And, uh, and the reason I could easily say it is I was there at the time. And when it is, it is shoved down your throat, regardless of an administration, it is, it is left to the law enforcement officials now to make gold from straw and to, and to try to be successful in operations based on individuals who are politicians and have very little knowledge in national security. And the reason I've always had a concern about it is that when we have, uh, you do not use this to deal with other critical um, initiatives in a, in a country. You will not have uh, someone that is not knowledgeable in energy try to say what needs to be done to imp in, um, improve um, energy in a, in a country, or economy, or finance. But we've had this perception for too long that national security is based on common sense and a level head. It is based that anyone can come up with ideas, and that is why we've had a hit on hope methods for so long, and that's why we have failed. The National Security Minister says crime fighting consists of three levels and stakeholders at each level should be allowed input in strategic decisions affecting national security and crime fighting. This is why it is so important that all hands are on deck with this. Because when we deal with the whole concept of crime prevention, it involves three different levels, the primary, the secondary and the tertiary. And yes, it is that the the protective services and the defense force, their focus is on the primary crime prevention, which involves hard targeting, deterrence, law enforcement, um, intelligence gathering. But even after that part is played, if we do not move on to the tertiary crime prevention, the secondary has to do with the social elements to take the youths away from the life of crime. But the tertiary is so critical, which involves from the arrest, what happens throughout, throughout that whole process of rehabilitation, the, the concept of reduction of recidivism. And, we, and to avoid that revolving door. And that is why the criminal justice system is so critical to this framework policy. Minister Griffith says for far too long, crime fighting initiatives have been politicized, but insists it is now time for that to change. This is not a country that belongs to any political party. It is not a PNM or UNC or COP or ILP country. This is a country for all of us. 
And with this, I, I ask all of us to work together and for us to formulate the right policy that we can then move forward. If it is we set a national security framework policy that is set, so regardless of whether administrations change, ministers change, we cannot be starting every single time there's a new minister of national security, there's a new administration, and we go right back to the start. Because the criminals, they continue to move forward, and they continue to build and develop, and we always start at scratch. And then after, we try to blame the law enforcement officials for not re reducing crime. And the buck stops with me as the Minister of National Security, where it is I need to ensure that we set this framework, we set this policy, and we move forward in the right direction, where this framework will be what will be set. And yes, there could be tweaking based on changes in administration, based on changes in, in, um, in ministers. But we have a framework policy, and the framework policy must be set by the experts. And the experts are those who, who, are, um, who are in uniform. Gregory McBurney, News 4. Carbon monoxide, or that should be carbon dioxide emissions from the exploration of oil and gas, can lead to further profitability in our nation's reservoirs. This, according to former U.S. Secretary of Energy Dr. Stephen Chu, who says Trinidad and Tobago can look at enhanced oil recovery if it is to up its oil production levels. Trinidad and Tobago's heavy involvement in oil and gas production could take a new turn in its diversification thrust. This is advice coming from former U.S. Secretary of Energy. Dr. Stephen Chu, who says utilizing carbon dioxide can increase the oil recovery and production process. Speaking at the annual energy conference hosted by the Energy Chamber, Dr. Chu says sequestering CO2 from the ground can provide an addition of up to 50% of oil for production. So you actually have the makings of using carbon dioxide for economic recovery and oops, some of it's going to get trapped underground <laughs> and sequestered. A very modest price on carbon means you should get credit. Let's say it's even 10 or $15. But, but you probably, I don't know the economics of your carbon dioxide ammonia plants. But a very modest price, if, if you say I can sequester for 200 years carbon dioxide, you should give credit, a monetary credit for that. Now, with the discovery of new oil wells on shore and expansion of production in the downstream sector, geologists have noted that undertaking this process often leads to the release of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. However, when injected back into reservoirs, the mix of CO2 leads to the release of additional hydrocarbons, allowing for more oil to be pumped to the surface. Dr. Chu says capturing the release of this carbon dioxide can be put to productive economic use, while at the same time reducing greenhouse gases. The United States has been doing this for a long time. Uh, going from 10, 5% to 10% to 20% to 30 to 40, 50% recovery. Uh, if you get really good at it, some good reservoirs, Saudi Arabia is, can get 70%. Uh, but standard is going towards 50%. There's no reason you should be leaving 85% of the wealth on the ground, okay? But you can, you can get it by also sequestering carbon dioxide. This is a good thing. And you have the carbon source. So my advice is it's good for the environment, it's good for the economy, it's good for everything. Dr. Chu adds, this process puts to use all your reservoirs, old and new ones. Even modest prices on carbon will drive business decisions and enhance the oil recovery and actually begin to decarbonize our use of fossil fuel. And that's what I'm saying, that, that this is what the oil and gas industry should be looking at. You've got to decarbonize. It could be profitable in the end to do this. So, so it's just a different business model. Even, even modest prices uh, can do it. Energy Minister Kevin Ramnarain says while sequestering has not been done here in Trinidad and Tobago, the National Gas Company was currently engaged in a study on how this will work best for reservoirs here in TNT. Kimberly Ram Kalawan, News 4. Spot is up right after the break. Stay with us.
Two central Trinidad communities can now enjoy the camaraderie and joy of sport on their upgraded recreation grounds. The Sport Company of Trinidad and Tobago completed works at Boca Roo as well as Phoenix Park grounds and handed over the keys last Thursday to a representative of the Kuva Tabaki Talparo Regional Corporation. Wayne Cunningham has more. The Honorable Anil Roberts, Minister of Sport, hails the Sports Company of Trinidad and Tobago for their quality work at the upgraded recreation grounds in Central ensuring that communities have access to facilities. I know the people who live in these communities are extremely grateful for the opportunity to access and enjoy the appropriate venues for sport and recreation. This is all part of the government's efforts in all sectors to develop safe spaces where sporting talent can be nurtured and where critical family and community ties can be forged, the minister said. Both facilities are now ready for use with the following amenities. Outfield with turf wickets, hard courts for basketball and netball, 500-seater pavilion with ramp as well as office, meeting and storage spaces. Change rooms with lockers, showers and toilets including disabled access toilet. Two cricket practice nets, jogging track, car park, perimeter fencing and drainage. Phoenix Park Recreation Grounds saw action as early as Sunday with a scheduled women's cricket league match between technocrats and cricket lovers. Work supervisor at the corporation, Ian Gokul, said the upgrades were very timely and suited the needs of both communities. He added that both grounds will be independently managed by a committee of stakeholders, including respective village councils and sports clubs in the area. Secretary of the Bukaru Village Council, Rina Passad, said she was grateful for the work done by the sports company, especially given the state of the ground before, stating that the spot was just an empty lot before work began. Sharing similar sentiments was Gangarang Gopal, councillor for Brechen Castle, Esperanza. The two grounds, along with Knoll Street and Kirep, are the three recreation grounds already handed over by the sports company, whose remit it is to upgrade these grounds for the benefit of grassroots sports and community enhancement. Wayne Cunningham, News for Sports. Thank you very much, Wayne. More news after the break. Stay with us. Local films will be on display in communities across Trinidad and Tobago commencing this weekend as the Trinidad and Tobago Film Festival hosts its fourth Carnival Film Series. Now the mini festival promises to be engaging and inspiring as citizens get a chance to view the productions of fellow local filmmakers. Carnival continues to offer a wide variety of features that celebrate the rich history and culture of Trinidad and Tobago. One such feature is the Trinidad and Tobago Film Festival's Carnival Film Series. News for Sports Director of Community Development at the TTFF, Ms. Melvina Hazard, who spoke of the project. When the Trinidad and Tobago Film Festival began the Carnival Film Series in 2010, so this is now our fourth year that we are hosting the series. And one of the reasons why we decided to insert this into the Carnival landscape is really to emphasize the, um, the importance of archiving and building on the legacy of uh, Carnival productions and uh, some of the cultural products of Carnival. While Carnival is a hectic season, Miss Hazard is confident that the film series will receive wide participation. Well, Carnival is arguably a very busy time and there's a lot of clutter and buzz of noise and confusion um, during the season and the lead up to the season. So what we try to do with our scheduling of this series is to do it um, before the burst of carnival activity, but not too far back so that we miss the momentum. So in the past, we've done it like maybe three weeks or two weeks before carnival. Um, the scheduling is also a little bit challenging because we have to avoid clashing with some of the big events like um, Panorama semifinals, the Marsh um, stick fighting finals, and all of those big carnival events leading up to carnival. This year, the annual showcase received the support of two government agencies. These new relationships are expected to assist the series in widening the audience it is exposed to. One of the reasons why we're able to do these um, community screenings, film screenings for free is really because of our sponsors. So this year we were very lucky to have NCC, National Carnival Commission, come on as a sponsor in addition to the Trinidad and Tobago Film Company who sponsored the series last year. So we approached um, the NCC last year 
because we've been doing this series uh, for three years prior and um, it was starting to become a firm fixture into the carnival landscape but we wanted to be a little more official and formalized and also by getting the official support of the NCC it means that we are officially programmed into the carnival calendar. The TTFF Community Development Director said the feedback received throughout the years has been phenomenal which has seen the series grown tremendously. On Saturday February 8th the first screening will take place at the Paramin Recreation Grounds and Cool Breeze Bar Paramin, where a short film package will be featured, comprising films such as Between the Lines and They Say Don't Play With Poison, Beneath the Mass, Kings of the Gael, Dance the Calypso, Whining, and After Mass. This same short film package will appeal to audiences on Sunday, February 9th at Trevor's Edge St. Augustine. On Thursday, February 13th, the series will move to Movie Town, Tobago, where attendees will view Beneath the Mass and No Buama No Fraid. Meanwhile, on Friday, February 21st, at the San Fernando Hill Recreational Grounds, Kings of the Gael and Beneath the Mass will be aired, while on Saturday, February 22nd, at the Safe Park Chagonas, patrons there will be privy to the shorts package. Bringing the Carnival series to an end, on Sunday, February 23rd, Kings of the Gael and Beneath the Mass will be screened at Nales Amphitheatre, National Library, Port of Spain. I think the best way that people can, can participate and contribute is to produce films. You know, and I think produce films in general because what we really want is to really develop um, the local film industry and to try to um, support the development of more content and high quality content. So at the end of this month, we are going to be announcing our calls for submissions um, where, you know, we have different categories. We have documentary, we have narrative, we have short and feature length uh, so that, you know, people can, can choose which area they want to submit to. Um, and most of the, when we do our community um, film outreach program, most of what we show um, has been historically featured in our annual film festival, which happens in September and October of each year. So I think the best way that people can contribute is really to produce film, appreciate film, and also to come out to uh, these free film screenings, you know, because we come all over Trinidad and Tobago. And when we come to your community, it really helps if people just come to show their support, support local content, support works uh, produced by the Caribbean and the Caribbean diaspora. Um, that way, it really encourages especially young people to get into filmmaking. For more information on the venues, dates, times and films, visit the community cinema link at ttfilmfestival.com. Nikolai Edwards, News 4. Well, that's how we wrap up this edition of our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Nicola Barto. Thank you for joining us.